Good morning, and welcome to St. John's. Either you are here or following the service online, it is always a blessing to have you part of the service with us. I do not have any announcement to announce this morning. We pray for those who are traveling during the summer season, and we pray for those who are sick, and we pray for those who need comfort from, from us. Are there anything to be announced from the floor? The good news that I'd like to share with you is the, uh, the it's a blessing to be a blessings. Um, we've been having them for a month now or more, and it is really a blessing for our congregation. They feed everyone almost every day, and we see people coming in and out of our parking lots and people coming in and out of the buildings. So we've made great use of the buildings to have them part of this community of faith here. So whenever you have time, please stop by and say hello to them, talk to them, and bring some help if you, if you have some spare time to, to help others. And let us continue our service today with uh, the first hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. That is hymn number 853 from the red hymnal on the pew. 853, would you please stand if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, 
turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent in your compassion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Would you please share the peace of the Lord? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Our responsive read is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is from Colossians, first chapter. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God has pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden through the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present every, everything mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Boys, would you please come up here? Come on, come on. Okay. 
This time I'm going to stand up. You two sit down here, please. Do you know what this is? Uh, yeah, a clock. Well, clock, okay, we're timer, whatever you can call it, right? Mm -hmm. What is this for? for uh-huh, to look up the time, to know what time is it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, and someone actually told me once that St. John used to have a big one sitting in the back there so that the pastor will be watching that clock to know how long his sermon is. Yeah. Maybe that's a joke, but I don't know if that really happened. But clock is for us to measure the time. And if you need to wake up at 6 a.m., you have to look at the clock. And if you need to see how long you do something, you watch the clock, okay? So this is, I'm, I have a challenge for you too this morning, okay? You want to watch it. It starts from 12 until this number 6. That means half a minute. Yeah. Can you hold still, not move, at all, for 30 seconds? Right? So you're going to watch this. Okay, from 6 to 12. Go ahead. It starts. It's hard, right? Okay. Okay, it looks like Jacob's going to pass the test. Okay, let's say that's half a second, half, half a minute. There was, there was two sisters. There were two sisters, okay? The big sister's name is Martha. What's her name? And then the other sister is Mary. Jesus came to their home, and Mary was sitting, and she was holding still for many hours listening to Jesus. Can you imagine? You guys did the half minute and it's kind of tough, right? Yeah. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to Jesus. And while she was listening, Jesus was teaching and teaching and teaching. What Jesus wants us is when Jesus speaks, when the word of God is being spoken, when we get to church, we need to learn from Mary to do what? To hold still. To do what? And listen to the word of God. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Downstairs, there is a place called Mary Martha Hall. You see where the food is? Yeah. And we, like, people, like, sit down and wait for each other and just, like, hang out. That place is called Mary Martha Hall. So that to give thanks to God for Mary, who listened to Jesus, and Martha, who fixed food for Jesus and his disciples. You want to pray with me? Come here. Now you can move. Now you can move. Come here. Want to hold hands? You repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus help, us to listen help us to listen and to learn from you. Learn from you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go back to your seat. Will the congregation please stand? The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the tenth chapter. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. 
the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, you care for your creation. You supply us with all of our needs. Help us to focus more to you and appreciate all the gift that you've been giving us. Help us not to be distracted by this world, but to focus more on your word. Come Holy Spirit, amen. Abraham was known to be the man of faith. The Old Testament talks about Abraham and his descendant, later on called the Israelites. The book of Hebrews speaks of Abraham as the man who was justified by his faith. Abraham was known to be the best host. He didn't let anybody passing by without having water and sharing meal with him. The 18th chapter of Genesis speaks to us about those three visitors who came by and Abraham invited them to be in his place so that he can serve them the best bread and meat and water. While he was serving his guests, he did not stay with them, but he did some work. He left his guest for a few hours or a few minutes, and then he came back. The book of Luke. Luke is known to be the Gentile writer in the New Testament. Luke was not a Jew, and he wrote the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. Luke gives us different perspective different views of who Jesus is. Luke brings us to look at Jesus focusing also not only to the Jews, but also to those who are outside of that clan or that tribe. Luke is the only one who wrote the parable of the Good Samaritan. Luke is the only one who talks about Jesus calling those tax collectors. Luke is showing us how close is Jesus even to those who are not descendant of Abraham. Luke gives us a special narration of the visit to Bethany to the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. The sisters are different in the Bible and there is a little narration or a little history behind them. It appears that Jesus has been visiting them a lot. There's a close relationship with Jesus that they have. Lazarus is the brother whom Jesus raised from the dead. You recall the story. So Jesus stopped by Bethany. There's no mention of Lazarus in this story, but we assume that Lazarus was there. Abraham in the Old Testament gave the best hospitality to his guest that happens to be servant of God. God himself visited Abraham. Can you imagine if Abraham did not invite them to come to his house? Because they are God. These are God. The angels of the Lord came and visited Abraham. We will see next Sunday the rest of the story, the conversation God himself had with Abraham. And you'll see also the rest of the story from Luke chapter 11 next Sunday when Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Martha did the same thing Abraham did. Martha was a great host. When we talk about this text, always people blame Martha. I want to be like Mary. We still need Martha to be around. Can you imagine how many guests Martha had this day? Just through a number. One, two people. Let's talk about 14. Jesus with his 12 disciples. That's 13 right there. Plus Mary and Martha. Maybe Lazarus. So a lot of folks to feed on that day. In the kitchen where there is no air conditioning. 
Imagine yourself and with the fire there trying to serve at the same time, but your little sister is doing nothing but the things that men are supposed to be doing. In the first century at the Jews era, women are not supposed to be staying with the teacher. That's the job for the men. The men are supposed to get the education. The women are supposed to be where? The best place of the house. Kitchen. And serving. And Ma Mary is sitting there with all of the men. And Martha gets frustrated. And instead of talking to Mary, Martha talked to the host. Can you imagine if you were the host and, and then the sister of the host say to you um, that you are the guest and say to you as a guest, my sister just sitting here at the table with you. Can you tell her to help me? That will make you uncomfortable, right? You see the relationship they have here and Martha just went straight to Jesus. Not to, his, not to the brother, not to anybody else, but to Jesus. And Jesus gave the answer, Martha, Martha, you are worried with many things. There is nothing wrong about serving. I know there are a lot of people in this congregation who loves to work for St. John's, but they do not make it to church. They do all of the work outside and inside and fixing food and fixing the buildings and doing everything, watching how the church are being run, but they never come to church. The work is great, but you miss the opportunity to listen to the word of God. When God created the universe, he spent six days, and then on the seventh day, what did God do? He took a rest, the Sabbath. And he told us, to give us the model also, to take one day out of the seven days for him. We worship on Sundays because that is the day when Jesus Christ rose from the day from the dead. And the early Christian just took that tradition and we worship on Sunday. But even on Sundays, the day that we give for God, we are still like Martha. We lose that opportunity to listen to the word of God. To listen and to be shared, to listen to people who went to the service and tell you what happened is not enough. Be like Mary, sit at the feet of Jesus. How much do you know about the word of God? I know it's common for the Lutheran church to have Bible study very, very, very negative. Not just zero, but less than zero. Attendance at Bible study is none. Very sad. I don't know the reason. Maybe people believe they know the Bible. But most of it is just being Martha. I don't have time for it. It's boring. The time that they choose is inconvenient. Uh, I can learn the Bible by myself. I can look at my, look at my phone and I, will just, I watch TV at home and follow those great preachers. Be at the feet of Jesus. Learn the word of God. One man once came to a preacher and said, I'm sorry, pastor, but I cannot get anything out of the Bible study. <laughs> and the pastor said, what are you talking about? Well, I got the Bible study, but I don't get anything out of it. What do I need to do? The preacher said, read it. Read what? Read the Bible. I don't know where to start. There are 60, 66 books in there. Just pick one, the shortest one, and read it. I do read it. Read it, read it, read it 12 times a day for a month, the same book. Just pick Second Peter. That's a short one. And he did it with his wife. Seems boring in the beginning, but when they get used to it, they somehow remember the Second Peter by heart. And later on, this man had a little man's group uh, Bible study and just talk about the second Peter. The more you do it, the more you like it. If you don't start it, you won't make it. We are busy with your daily business. We are busy with everything that we do. You can make a list of what you do from the time you open your eyes in the morning until you go to bed at night. 
if you make it before midnight. And when we look at it, what we do is we are just like a hamster on a wheel, just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Give time for Jesus. If Sunday is that time, give part of that time for him. Those who watch this service online, lots of them are cheating. They keep pushing the next, 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 especially when they do not follow it live. And then they see the end. Okay, did he, is he finished yet? That's what I love about the clock. I would prefer sometimes to have a big one back there. And then when I am 30 minutes of preaching, ding, says the clock. Give time for Jesus. Sit at his feet. Psalm 46, verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. God is taking care of all of your needs. Jesus, in Mark chapter 1, after being tired with the, with the crowd, he left early the next morning and he spent time by himself with God and prayed. Give time for God. God is very jealous, God. He wants your attention. Stop and pray. Stop and read. Stop and worship. Make Sunday a great day of the week to be with your fellow Christians, to listen to the word of God, and to praise Jesus Christ together. Amen. Would you please stand and let us sing together the worship songs, hymn number 520, Dearest Jesus at Your Word, 520 from the Red Hymnal. Please stand if you are able. Oh. 
please turn to page number seven and let us profess our faith as we use the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and has buried. He descended into the grave. On the third day, he rose again, descended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Are there any joys or concerns to be shared this morning? Any birthdays coming up? Anniversary coming up? You had yours last week? Yes. Congratulations. Praise God. It is good to see Bob here worshiping with us this morning and without oxygen. God is good all the time. That is good. Okay. Any other things to announce? Okay. Let us continue with the prayers of the church. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. I invite you this morning to reply with hear our prayer when I say God of grace. Ever-present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, Teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you, God of grace. Through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach hum humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures, God of grace. Through Christ, you reconcile all things, motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples, God of grace. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are wearied and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. We pray for those who are sick from this congregation. We pray for Sue Ronnie. We pray for continuing healing for Susan Hayes, Bob Crawford. God of grace. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders, God of grace. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table Gather us with them in your eternal glory, God of grace. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Let us continue of, uh, with offering.
Could the congregation please rise? Let us pray together. Holy God, gracious and merciful, our Father. Please receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our sending hymn is hymn number 544, 544, praise the Lord, rise up rejoicing. Dear friends, now go in peace and serve the Lord.